So imagine you're 18, 19, 20 years old, more than likely 20, 21. You're in Australia for the first time ever in your life, and now you're joining the USS Croker on her fourth war patrol out of Australia. Now it's probably the first time you're in Australia. There's a lot of uh, city life and action down there. And for your first few days on board, you feel okay, but you know, all of a sudden you start getting some itching and burning and some pain. Well, you've come down with a case of gonorrhea. And five other crew have had come down with a case of urethritis, which is another sexually transmitted disease. So where are you going to go on board the croaker? There are no sick bays. There isn't a chief medical doctor. Right? But you will go visit the chief pharmacist mate, and he will bring you to the after battery compartment and the main birthing space on board, and he will go to the medical stores behind me. So unlike the Sullivans and the Little Rock, the Croker's War Patrols always gave a very, well, I can't say very, but they, all, they always gave a detailed report of the health of the crew on board. Of course, the a submarine has a much different uh, has much different needs and also concerns if there's infections that start to travel around the crew. If you've watched our other USS the Sullivans and the Little Rock, they were always able to be placed a little separate from the rest of the crew and with great ventilation. Uh uh, not here on board. So it was very uh, important to if you were feeling ill, to let someone know right away, uh, go see the chief pharmacist mate, and try and get cured as best as possible. So it's not surprising that on her fourth war patrol coming out of Fremantle, Australia, that there might be some sexually transmitted disease issues. All right, again, because as I mentioned, you're in a larger city. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of population and a lot of the opposite sex there. <laughs> for, yeah, for lack of a better phrase, uh, and you're a young, you're a young guy. So, kind of running through her war patrols, in her first war patrol, though, that's where most of the guys got sick. But they, the war, the war patrol says that about eighty percent of the guys had a chest cold, uh, sore throat, and again, that's a testament to the closeness uh, and the tightness of the crew and the ventilation systems that it can spread pretty quickly. All right, that's also the first war patrol is that she, she was awarded a Navy unit commendation all right, for the, sinking, the four sinkings that she had on her first war patrol. So they may have been sick, but, they've met, but they were mighty. All right, so uh, thankfully I received a donation of some period piece uh, medicines. So we've added some throughout each of the uh, medical bays and, and the sick bays. Uh, but so we were able to add some here. I'd love to try some of this gum, uh, but I don't have the guts. All right, obviously that plastic bottle <laughs> is not extent to World War II. So reading through all the diaries, there wasn't really major sicknesses on board. There was an officer on her first war patrol as well that also that had. Uh, bad shoulder strain or sprain or maybe broke a collarbone so he was laid up on the sick list for about 10 days they gave him a lot of morphine um, and on her sixth and final war patrol there was a, a, a mess steward who in heavy seas was tossed across the galley so here's the galley here there would have been a fourth table that we will be putting up, but we haven't yet. There's a little bend to it, and so we have to kind of straighten that out. So if you could believe it, he was, uh, he, the steward was thrown across and broke an arm. So where would they go? Well, they might be able to use one of these tables, all right, on the, on the mess deck. Uh, but also, like the Sullivans, they would have used the officer's wardroom table. So if you've watched that uh, video, the sick bay on the Sullivans, 
you'd know that during general quarters, uh, they would turn the ward room where the officers would eat uh, into the dressing station, uh, the main dressing station on board. And so maybe for the, the steward that broke his arm, they would have used the officer's ward room to lay him out and to be able to inspect and to set at some point uh, his arm. All right, they did not have x-rays on board and they made sure to mention that. There was no x-ray technology on board the ship or on board the boat, so they weren't able to uh, really take a look inside to see where the broke, where the, uh, the break and the fracture happened. Um, but thankfully that was very close to, they may have been steaming for port at that time. So that he was able to go on shore uh, relatively quickly. And also on the 5th War Patrol, some, uh, I think they say four guys were uh, making some chocolate milk and they used some bad creamer. Uh, and they had Montezuma's revenge for a bunch of days, and the chief pharmacist mate had to take care of that as well. But as you can imagine, otherwise, there would have been a lot of uh, heat stroke. There would have been a lot of uh, skin rashes uh, because of the heat, especially time and again in the uh, war reports, in the, in the war diaries of the Croker, they keep mentioning how the maneuvering room is the warmest spot on the ship. And they actually recommended in an earlier uh, war patrol report that they should remove the head and add another air conditioning system just for that space. So it seemed as though the chief pharmacist mate had a lot of uh, ointments and liniments to use and essential oils uh, to kind of cure the skin. Uh, there's scabies on board, certainly coughs and chills and fevers. Uh, but no dedicated space that they would be able to go to. So they probably had to go right back to uh, their birthing or their bunk and be on the sick list for a few days uh, or try and get uh, cured and remedied as best as possible and get right back to work. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'm Shane Stevenson, Director of Museum Collections and Curator here at the Buffalo Naval Park. We love that you uh, are supporting us. And I hope you've been enjoying this 28 and 28 video series that we're doing uh, and also the live uh, series that we just did uh, last Wednesday and last night. So hopefully you tuned into those. And again, we shall see you tomorrow or very soon. Thanks for your support.